In part two of this lesson, we'll continue where we left off. And we left off with question two. We're asked to determine the angle measure indicated by each letter. So we have A, C, B, and D. As you can see, we have a completed triangle here. And a triangle consists of 180 degrees. So we can find angle C by taking 180 degrees, subtracting it from 48 and 58. If you use your calculator, you end up with 180 minus 58 minus 48, and we end up with 74. Another thing that you can do is find angle D. Take a look. 58 and D are supplementary angles. Adding them up will give you 180 degrees. So if I set up a simple equation where I take 180 degrees and subtract it from 58, I'll end up with what angle D is equal to. And that is 122 degrees. The reason why finding D is important is because D and A are co-interior angles, meaning that if you add up D and A, you also get 180 degrees. So I'll take 180 degrees and subtract it from 122, which is what I just found for D, and I should end up with angle A. That will end up giving me 58 degrees. Another thing you could have done was alternating angles. Notice that this is a Z shape, where that's a parallel line, that's a parallel line. Therefore, if that's 58, so is A. We found C and A. Together, if we add those up, we can find B by supplementary angles. So I can take 180 degrees and subtract it from the sum of C plus A. Or I can subtract it from C and from A. I know C is equal to 58 degrees. A is equal to 58 degrees. Therefore, 180 minus 58 minus 58 is 64. Angle B is 64 degrees. Let me highlight all my findings. So this was B. This should be A. This is C, and this is D. Let's move on to question three. This one is slightly more difficult than all of the other questions we've done. I'm going to start by focusing on this side of my figure. Notice that 107 and B are supplementary angles. So I can find B by taking 180 degrees and subtracting it from 107 degrees. 180 minus 107 is 73. Now we can find G because B and G are opposite angles. If that's 73, so is G. We have a triangle right here, and a triangle adds up to 180 degrees. So I can find D by taking 180 minus 45 minus what I found for B. Let's use our calculator. 180 minus 45 minus 73. We end up with 62. We found three angles so far. According to alternating angles, angle A and 45 should be the same. Notice that you spot a Z. So this is 45 degrees. Using a similar technique to that we did above, I can add up A and D and subtract it from 180 to find C. So I'll take 180 minus what I found for D, which was 62, minus what I found for A, which was 45, and let's find out the difference. 180 minus 62 minus 45 gives us 73. So this angle and B are the same. And you could have found that out by using the Z rule as well, alternating angles. Now we have to find out E and F. That's not hard to do. A and F are going to be the same. Angle A is equal to angle F because they're opposite angles. And to find out E, all I have to do is subtract 180 from angle F, which is the same as angle A, and that happened to be 45. And you should end up with 135 degrees is angle at this point, you should list all of your angles, starting from A all the way to G. And so there you have it. That is how to solve unknown angles with parallel lines.